What's good? It's Kelby Cannon, publisher of Mega the Magazine, founder of the membership, and we sitting with Lala Shep. Yes, sir. One on one interview. Uh, thought it was time for you to come by and, you know, I've been dropping hints that I've been wanting to sit down with you for. <laughs> we want to talk about your progress. I can't wait. I'm excited. You know, I'm ready for wait. the report. I couldn't wait to do this. So I'm glad we're able to make it happen. Nah, definitely. So, um, I, and I felt like it was a good timing uh, with everything because, like, you just did the um, the progress report, just uh, landed on the Revolt Podcast Network. Yep. Um, and it's like, uh, I think, man, it may have been like six, seven years ago. When you first popped up on my radar, I watched you move around in the city yeah. and I invited you out for one of the oh, eating yeah. greets that we did. Absolutely. I was like, I saw you. I'm like, she's going to be Always show somebody. love. <laughs> Always show love, Kelby. I appreciate that. No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. Like, some people, do, you just see it in them. Absolutely. Like, so, like, whatever you do, I'm like, she's going to be successful with that. That's love. Because there's certain people that, like, it's, it, you can gain knowledge. Absolutely. But, like, like drive that's 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 a guy get, i think that's one of the things we, we talk about like when it comes to us being in the music industry mm. and we talk about um talent what is it hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard mm. But, mm. but saying that insinuates that hard work isn't talent right because talent is something that's got to get. Everybody ain't got it in them to I work agree. hard. I, man, what? I say that all <laughs> the time. That's facts. That's true. So um, so let's th let's start at the beginning of your journey, like growing up in a household full of music, exposed to everything from, mm. from the hip hop, the soul, the reggae. Tell us about your upbringing and, and how you really developed your love for music. Definitely. Well, I mean, just like you said, it was just always music around. You know, I think... I think in a way, all African-American households are kind of similar in that. Cleaning on fashion. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same ordeal. Um, you know, uh, my dad, he listens to nothing but reggae still to this day. So, you know, I think my you love... Jamaican? No. Okay. I'm I mean, not. I was about nah, to say the work not. ethic, it makes right? sense. It makes sense, right? I mean, I, I haven't done my DNA ancestry thing, but as far as I know, no. But no, he did some time. Um, and, and, you know, I think he started getting to reggae in. Right. I could be wrong. I got a fact check, but he always listened to reggae right. ever since I could remember when I was a little girl and still to this day. And that's his thing. And, you know, for me, um, I appreciated it because I love the production. It was always the vibe. The beat was just, I didn't know what they were saying, but the beats was so crazy. Right. And I'm like, man, you know, I try to play it off like I ain't like it. You know how girls and dads are. I'm like, oh, what is this? But yeah. I really, I really liked it. <laughs> so that was that. Then my mom, you know, my mom would play everything from hardcore gangster stuff to Easy E to... You know, and WA, of course, um, to New Edition, right. to everything. So my mom, you know, and she played a lot of different things for me. So that exposed me to a lot of just classic music and artistry. Um, and then, you know, my greedy granny, my grandma played the old school Anita Baker vibe. So I just always just was fascinated with music. I never wanted to be an artist. I was just so fascinated with like, man, like just how a, a song can bring out a certain emotion in you. And I was young, so I'm like, damn, like it was just always fascinating. And as I, you know, got older and found my own style and things that I like, my mom always supported anything that I wanted to do. Anything I wanted to listen to, she'd give me the explicit version because I hated the clean. My dad right. would give me the clean version. <laughs> the, the first Eminem CD, he got me the clean CD. Although I was appreciative for the CD, I'm like, yo, like, come on. Like, hey. the clean <laughs> version, you cuss around me all the time yeah. for real. All the stuff they saying in this reggae stuff, I do hear that. And you can give me the clean, but, you know. So, but my mom, she would always give me whatever I want because I was good at school, you know. Right. So, you know. Anything I wanted as far as music, I was listening to, um, you know, even NSYNC, Avril Lavigne. I was listening to that. My Webbies, your crime eyes, everything. So I just always loved music. The franchise boys, like it just it just always made me feel good. It was like that one thing that was my thing. You know, I would introduce a lot of my friends to a lot of Southern yeah. music and stuff because I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. So right. I just always gravitated to Southern music and just, it just, you know, it was always my thing. Like just, just introducing everybody to different sounds. So well, here's a, here's an interesting thing because you came up in the era 
a, a very interesting era with yeah. the transition yeah. from from the old industry to the new industry. Right. So there was this space where the industry hadn't adopted the technology, but we on the so ground true. had. And so mm. it, it like there were a lot of people who became influencers, tastemakers, because them playlists before they was on Spotify, they was at the gas station, so they was on the CDs, on, they was in the right. beauty shops. Like, cause I had a mixtape franchise mm. when I, that's how I used to push my records for my label, got my you, artists. Got you. So, so like, as you being a, 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 a actual fan of the music mm. and, and I know that you started doing the CDs and, and, and being that conduit to getting records out in your local market. When in your head did that transition go from just fandom to, yo, this could possibly be mm. a career path. I want to help promote artists and records and brands. To be honest, I always had that mindset ever since we got a computer. Mm -hmm. now, I ain't going to say laptop because as y'all know, it was a computer right. before it was that, <laughs> you know, um, with the dial up ADO, AOL <laughs> system and stuff. So. I was just always proactive and looking up things online because I believed in the power of online. Like I would just remember reaching out to people on MySpace, just from Will Packer to um, I can't I always forget my man's name. He's a huge video director, Gil mm -hmm. something. I always forget his name and I apologize. But I just remember reaching out to them because I'm like, you know, it's possible. No. I just I just I'm in this I'm in this small place, so I don't think. It's possible here, but it's possible because it's people making it happen. So I just really, ever since we had a computer, I always believed in it. So I would guess that would just be from since high school. Right. And um, I just always knew it was possible. I would always go online and look up different internships. I remember I wrote ATL picks back in the day. Just, <laughs> just hella people and yeah. just, just, just trying to just see what it would take. You know, just knowing what I know now back then is just so funny, but. Just I would always yeah, believe shooting it. the shot. Just like, shoot my yeah. shot. I always shot my shot. Like so. Oh, okay. So I got I got a question for you. Yes. In in doing that, mm -hmm. um, because I feel like it's it's so different now. Mm -hmm. Like because I would say uh, I'm a little older than you. Mm -hmm. So you're in that window, like when you're like in high school. I'm all like. I moved down here in 20, 2005. Got you. Right? Mm. And so I was already doing music. I graduated in 2000. Right. So between 2000 and 2006, I was an artist moving around. Right. Doing that. Yeah. And, Active. And, and, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was probably a little more jaded by then. Like, of I know how. Of course. You, you in it. Yeah. It's different when you in it. And yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 too, come from the Midwest, I'm from Indianapolis. Yep. And so one of the things that I hear hear from you is, you know, knowing and seeing the possibility. And and here's a question for you. Mm. How often did you travel around at when you were younger mm. as a kid, like out of state, like going, did you do a lot of traveling or did you spend a lot of time, most of your time in Ohio? To be honest, most of my time was spent in Ohio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I will say um, I have an uncle down here mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, his ex-wife. So we would come visit when I was young every mm -hmm. so often in the summers right before school. So I right. go to the underground, get my light up belts, right. get some exclusive shoes and just gear. Right. But to be honest, I was never exposed to the music stuff because if I was, I would have fell in love with it right, right then and there. So I... No, I just knew it was possible just because I believed in the online power early. Right. I knew the digital space was going to be big. I just didn't know how big. I didn't know. I didn't know. But I right. just believed in it. I'm like, yo, this shit is crazy. Like, I'm literally writing this person that I'm looking up to and they responding back to me. Like, yeah. how crazy is this? So, no, I, I definitely spent a lot of my time in Ohio. Okay. I don't think I traveled. Was, here's the reason why. Mm. Like, because you travel down here. Yeah, so, right. So, and so yeah. being from Ohio, being yeah. from Cincinnati, you know people who've never left Cincinnati. Of course. Except for, of course, you know, the other uh, Cedar Point, King's Eye. Yeah, right. Of <laughs> like, course, you know. of course. Of course. <laughs> like, yep. So like being able to come where going, traveling where you see a different mm. culture. 
mm-hmm. where you see things that aren't the norm. Because right. I think that's one of the things that, where, I, um, like, one of the beautiful things about Atlanta is like Atlanta is Atlanta. Atlanta is beautiful. But it's the transplants mm-hmm. 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 that if if not for the transplants, if not for it being because it's the it's the it's what New York is right. for Black people right. because it's a melting pot for all the cultures that's from like facts. all these from the Midwest, from the West Coast, from Everywhere. North. Like so. What I what I've come to notice is a lot of times the people who are like active mm-hmm. tended to move around or travel, nice. be out, left home right early on to see that something was possible. Mm-hmm. So when you're talking to me about seeing the online and being able it to was, see it, I swear it was. Yeah. I didn't. I think if I would have traveled more, I would have really realized that it mm-hmm. was really. Um, like a thing that could yeah. happen. I didn't, I didn't. But the door was cracked. The door was cracked, of and so, course. That's all you needed. Like. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just really, like, I just was always one of them people that just, I just, if, if I put my mind to it, I just know it's going to happen. Like, right. because I work, I've always worked hard. Right. Because I didn't have no excuse not to work hard. You right. know what I'm saying? My mom, she was a great example. She got her master's degree while I was a kid. Right. So it's like, you know, if she can do that, and I ain't got no, you ain't got no excuse. I have no excuse. <laughs> so to me, it was always possible. I just didn't know how. Right. And um, you know, just my my first experience like living out of state uh, was my first year in college. Right. I went to St. John's, New York. Mm-hmm. So I was just fearless. I just never really. I just I was just never stuck, and I'm glad about I'm that. I'm picturing a young. Young Lala on the main streets of New York getting it in like what? (laughs) It was it was crazy. New York was like it it was it was needed. It was necessary. I personally don't feel like I love New York to live there. I got so much respect for the culture. I love all my friends. I'm still friends with a lot of people that I made friends with there, but Atlanta always felt like home. Whereas New York, I knew I was a visitor. It but it, it taught me so much about people skills, about just mannerisms and just also the world is big. Yeah. I was just always fearless. You know, I just I don't know. It just it, that's just always been me, especially when I was younger. I think you're more fearless when you're younger. I think yeah. as you get older, you got more things you gotta think about, more to lose and stuff. Right. But um it was nothing to me. I'm like, shit, Atlanta just, I, after I graduated college, my heart and God told me to be here. You know, you brought up something I think that is um, like a, an important point, just how you have that fearlessness when you're younger. It's easy because Facts. you don't have the responsibilities. Mm-hmm. That's right? true. Yep. So I wanted to get your opinion on something because I personally feel like while the internet did open that door mm. and to be everything to be big, it robs our youth of that fearlessness mm, for the fear of like, cause like, cause we can fuck up. Of course, like, listen, right. if, if, if you catch a fade or anything at your school or anything, yeah. it may travel across town. Right. You ain't going to become inter- an international star for right. getting your ass. <laughs> right. You feel me? Like anything can happen now. So like to the point where like, I like we like, when, especially when we come into the creative space and the mm. arts, like, a lot of artists holding on music won't do stuff because yeah. they're just afraid to fail. I get it. So, like, what are your thoughts on that when it comes to the the flip side mm. of the digital space and that that robbing people of that 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 fearlessness? That's a great point. I think you know, I'm just I'm just thankful that I my time was you know for transitioning to things was when it was. I'm glad that technology was developing as I was developing. Mm-hmm. And I'm thankful that I definitely had a childhood without technology. I, right. I honestly, you know, if it wasn't for what I did as a career, I would probably only have Facebook and, you know, Snapchat just because I like the fact that you can save and look at old stuff. And I, I understand Instagram has this feature too before somebody says something, but <laughs> I just feel like, you know, it just, it messes, like it's so many different things within that conversation. For me personally, Social media can be a lot. It is. And, and it, you know, I can only imagine how tough it is for a young person. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm, it ain't a lot, it's a whole lot. <laughs> right. No, it is. And it's, it's, you know, yeah. if, if I if I wasn't in the space that I was in, I, I like I said, I would have LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah. Period. And and that's a, like, I think one of the things, people think I'm online more than I am. Right. But it's like, no. 
I don't know what y'all talking about. And like, if you are, it works though. Yeah, you know? yeah, like I don't know. Like I be, you gonna have to send that to me. Right, I, don't I, know. I respect that. I respect that. <laughs> so, but yeah, just trying to keep that that good mental space. But yes. Uh, so, all right. You went to New York. Mm -hmm. You were majoring in public relations and journalism. Yep. And then you transitioned back to Cincinnati to finish it out. Facts. Tell us about the the shift coming from mm. New York back to Cincinnati because Man. once you you in New York, you already it's a different thing and the It was the glasses is off and you see Cincinnati in a different way. I'll say this though. I was really discouraged my sophomore year because I was one point away from getting a scholarship that I needed to stay at St. John's. Right. So I was upset at myself and mad at my teacher because I'm like, you know, I work hard and you know, I participate. You could have gave me a 96, you gave me a 94, whatever. whatever. Right. I can't remember, but I was real discouraged. And it wasn't even about being from different cities or just nothing. Honestly, um, I love my roommate. Shout out to my roommate. I hated the New York living. I didn't have my car. I didn't want my car. Right. I didn't like the food options on campus. I gained the freshman 15 was real. <laughs> um, I just, I just, I was different from those kids. A lot right. of them kids came from money. And, mm -hmm. you know, my situation was different. I worked full time all throughout my whole four years of college. So for me, I wasn't mad because I had to leave New York. I was just discouraged that I didn't get that scholarship because I knew it would have made it easier on everybody, including, right. you know, myself, my mom, my dad, everybody that was helping me pay for stuff. Right. So I was just real discouraged. So it was a weird time for me. And honestly, it was so last minute. I didn't know what I was going to do my sophomore year. I didn't know if I was going to not go back to school. I was this close to entering like um, a program to get like a trade. Um, but then it just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel, I just felt like I was doing it and I right. just didn't feel like, and my mom could tell that, you know, and I, I gotta always praise my mom cause my mom knows like, you know, she just know me and just, it just didn't feel right. So I'm like, all right, well, let's look up some local options. You know, where can I go? Um, so I didn't mind being back home cause for one, I'm, I'm big on family. I always right. wanted to be close to my family. I was so grateful that I had the experience and opportunity to go to New York. It taught me a different hustle. I worked at the busiest um, uh, Dunkin' Donuts slash Baskin Robbins. So that that alone, like, really taught me my people skills. You right. know what I'm saying? Stuff that I could never learn nowhere else. But, but, but you know, yeah. going back home was cool. I had my car. I was able to see my family. Lifestyle. My lifestyle. Yeah. You know, it was fine. I was not tripping. And um, it was last minute when I made up my decision about school. The only reason why I picked Xavier was because cause we got UC, that's where my mom graduated from, okay. and we got Xavier, and we got other schools too, but those are the main two biggest. Mm. UC campus is everywhere. It's hardly no parking. It's just right. too much. So I'm like, well, let me go to Xavier. I done been there several times for, you know, some just back, you know, just visiting schools. I was yeah. familiar with the campus, and I just thought it was more of my speed. I like, I like, I like boring school right? because I almost came to Clark. I almost went to FAMU and I didn't because I know me. Right. Either I'm going to turn up or I'm going to just do school and I didn't need to turn up. Because Lala be turning up. I'm going to turn up. <laughs> and I just was just like, man, let me go to Xavier and, and focus. I got so that's you. how that happened. Putting that in the context of, I guess, today mm. is like everything that's online is predicated on entrepreneurship. Mm. You don't need a job. Why work? Why why spend forty hours a week on somebody else's dream? Like to the point where we we downplay the significance of work and the significance of having a job. And, yeah. and it's like it's so much. It, it you don't necessarily just get paid in dollars. And I'm pretty sure they weren't paying you thirty dollars an hour to work at Duncan. Absolutely not. Right. right. So, <laughs> but but. From that, from that job, mm -hmm. you learned these other things that you leverage facts in your career. Still to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So can you speak to like just like the like some of the skills, some of the things mm -hmm. or an incident that 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 still sticks with you Absolutely. from working at Duncan Man. that 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 impacts you still today? Definitely. It was so many life lessons and stuff. I mean, it's so many. So I'll start with uh, first customer service. Right. You know, the customer is always right. Learning your customers. 
being at the busiest Dunkin' Donuts slash Baskin Robbins in New York, it was crazy as it sounds. Right. Because if, if anybody has been to New York, everything is tight. But ours was huge. And it would be, I worked the morning shift, so <laughs> it would be flooded. Now, it was a couple of things. I dealt with a lot of adversity. I was the only black girl. Mm-hmm. And, and it was a lot of Indian people. It was a mm-hmm. few white girls. So, of course, they looking at me like, oh, she ain't about to work. Or they really doubted me. You right. know what I'm saying? And that was fine. I, you know, but I showed and proved literally within a week. Right. To the point where they can't wait for me to oh, make sure she on my shift. You right. know what I mean? So that was number one. You know, never getting discouraged. You know what I mean? Show and prove. Like, don't, you know, just be be an asset to whatever situation you involved in. Because, you know, I remember them looking at me crazy. Like, damn, right. like, she ain't about to work. That, and like I was saying before, just learning your customer. It was one lady in particular. She was always so rude, so nasty to everybody that worked there. First, I'm thinking it's just me because I'm black. Right. But then I noticed she was nasty with other people too. So I took that initiative of like, all right, well, she's going to be in here every other day. Let me learn how she likes her coffee. So then when she comes, she ain't got to go off on the whole staff. So then once I learned how she liked her coffee, she was calm. You know what I mean? She would come in. I'm like, all right, I got you. I know what you want. You know, so just learning people and it's just, you know, just being an entrepreneur, the the customer service to me is everything. Right. And not even being an entrepreneur. If I go to your establishment, if I go to a Dunkin' Donuts today, if you are, if you got good customer service, I don't forget it. I'm going to tip you. I'm going to go out of my way to thank you for making me feel good. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I apply that with my business today. If if anybody shop with me, anybody, anything like that. I make sure that you leave a satisfied, happy customer. If you not, for whatever reason, I'm going to do everything to fix that because I don't want you to leave with a bad taste. Right. Um, but, you know, it was it was so many, even just me just multitasking, even though that's not really a thing, but just, you know, learning how to time certain things. Like, I'm over here whipping it up. I'm making the sandwiches, the hash browns, the <laughs> coffees. They couldn't believe it. And the whole while I'm still studying, you know what I'm saying? I got my notes pulled up, but it's just like, if I'm focused on something, I'm going to get it done. Right. So it's just like, again, no excuses. Like, get it done. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, just do everything to your best 100% ability. And, and I, I think that's an important thing, no matter what it is that you're doing, do it to your best. Yes. And, I, and that's what I kind of pull from. And like I said, that's the thing, like, that I saw on you when I first saw you. I like that. I appreciate that for sure. That meant a lot. So, all right. So now you're back in Cincinnati. Yes. You finish everything out. Mm. (laughs) Insert meme of uh, craziness and celebration right here. Please. (laughs) And then, um, and so then what, what was it that, prompted you to relocate to Atlanta? Like, how did that come about, that transition? Like I said, all throughout college, I worked full time. I I never had that uh, typical college experience because it was one of those things where, like, what's fun to me might not be fun for the next person. Like, I'm, I'm really just, I've always wanted to create a life that I would just love to wake up to every day. So I understood that you got to sacrifice this time now to get to that. I didn't want to, no disrespect to nobody, I just didn't want to have to go to school when I was an adult. I wanted to do it while I was young because I just can't, I didn't I didn't love school. Even though I was good at it, I, it, I just, I didn't love it. Right. So it's like I wanted to get that shit done and I knew in order to do that for me personally, I had to stay focused because if I didn't, it wouldn't have happened. So, Turn up. Yeah. So, <laughs> I would do stuff on the weekend, you know, me and my best friend would go out to eat and that type of stuff was fun to me, you right. know, or just bringing in groceries at the crib. That was fun to me. You know what I'm saying? Just well, that, hold on. what type of grocery bringer in are you? Just, are you the as many bags at one oh, time? I got or the one? Oh, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. And you ain't about to just see these orange. You know I'm bringing in. I'm bringing in the milk, the juice. We're... Come on now. These arms ain't long for we bringing in all the groceries at one time and if something don't make it, it's gonna sit in the car. So no, but that that type of stuff was always fun for me. So right. it just I was just always on some stuff like, well, as soon as it was real it was more so like my junior, definitely my senior year. I'm talking to my best friend, I'm like, yo, like 
I feel like I got to move to Atlanta. It was just always in my heart. And again, it's just God talking to me, working through me. Because again, I don't really know nothing about Atlanta besides what I remember going when I was younger, right before school. So I didn't know nobody besides, you know, my aunt and uncle, but they older. So it's not like I was connected to anything. Similar situation. I had an aunt down here. I've been down here twice before I moved. Got you. So it was just like... It felt right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was it was that. And I'm like, you know, my senior year, I just couldn't wait to be done with school. I'm like, oh, my God. So it was just that. I'm just like, you know what, man, I'm going to ask my aunt if I can stay with her. And then I just want to just get my head in this music thing. I was reaching out to people on Twitter. That's how, you know, I was able to connect with a few producers at the time and I just went for it because it just felt right. And again, it was like, even if I fail and this don't go right, I did everything by the book that I was supposed to do. I got my diploma, mom. I got everything. So y'all can't be mad at me if something messes right. up. Y'all can't. So that's, it was just more so I was doing it for myself because I'm like, man, now I'm about to really go to school for me. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what that was. So you're down here. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to your aunt. Of course. Of and, course. And I think and that's a, an important thing. Um, cause people see people's success mm-hmm. and don't understand the support system that enables that Come success. On. Facts. And so like, that's why I want to give a shout out to the, Got to, like, man. like, because Got to. it's like my, my partner, Dre, he had moved down here and mm. he had a spot. So when I was able to come down, yeah. to have, it, it's, it's a blessing. Yeah. You, and, and it may be a small thing, but it's a small thing that makes a huge difference. Absolutely. So. And, and with that being said, you're down here, mm-hmm. and with that, with having that support, it, it enables you to move a little more freely. Can you tell us about some of the first people that you worked with? Absolutely. Um, when you got down here, definitely. Like you said, we gotta salute the support from my aunts to. You know, my mom for even believing in me, just everybody just because it, it goes a long way. It's the emotional support and it's the physical support as well. Um, but I wasn't playing no games. I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't come down here to play. I didn't I wasn't tripping off like like even just when I would be around celebs, like nothing really excited me. It wasn't even that. It was more so just knowing that I was being productive. Right. Because I was around a lot of celebrities early. You know, in Atlanta, you go to the gas station, you're going to run into, you know, future, especially back then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't even that. It was just like, I, I like I reached out to a lot of producers on Twitter, Dundeal being the main one, because me and Dundeal did a lot of great things together. So salute to him. Um, and, and, you know, some stuff had happened and we didn't get to work together immediately right away. So that was unfortunate, but then we, we ended up working together. But then the second week I ended up meeting DJ funky. Okay. Cause I random, I'm randomly at strokers. Like, so, you know, I'm at the bar, I'm telling this, this guy, like what I want to do. Just crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> random as hell. What year was this? Uh, 2013, 2013. So nine years ago. Yeah. All right. So I'm telling him like, you know, I'm trying to be in the music industry. I just really want to be somebody assistant. So then I can eventually do PR. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, girl, like what? Like, he like, all right, go talk to the DJ. He told me that the dude. Right. And so I'm like, okay. Cause I'm already knowing in my mind, the producers is important. It's not that I didn't know the DJ wasn't important because I know how important they were, but I'm like, all right, well, I'm, you know, I'm trusting the process. So go holler at DJ Funky. And then literally that same night, he like, come back to Struggles tonight. So, you know, every night I'm driving from Douglasville to wherever he needs me. Every night. But I don't. Oh, no. For those of you watching at home, that's a long ass drive. <laughs> It was a drop. Now, see, now my, my graduation gift to myself because I always worked hard. I did treat myself to a new car at the time. Right. So I had me a nice car because in Atlanta, if you ain't got no car, you got to have yeah, some you type did of transportation. Out these waters, like. So I had a nice car, fortunately. So the drive, it wasn't, it was I don't long. even think Uber wasn't even like really a thing. At the I, I knew nothing thing. about Uber. Yeah. yeah like, and if you it should, was, you couldn't, oh, hell no. Nah. I, I couldn't afford that. I would have come out. I could barely afford gas. Like. So yeah. I'm working with Funky, man. We working together. I'm I'm pretty much just his assistant. Right. I'm in a DJ booth trapping it out. You know, I'm I'm observing, I'm learning, I'm just seeing how things go. I'm seeing, I'm always figuring out how could I be an asset to a situation. Right. Because social media is just everywhere. And I'm like, Funky, let me get you together. So <laughs> I'm helping him get organized with the social media. 
every contact that comes in to get his music played or network, I'm getting a number, but I'm also introducing myself like, you know, don't forget me, right. don't forget my face. Right. So, you know, I'm everybody, managers, publicists, I'm paying attention because I'm like, damn, it ain't just the artists that he, you know, that know him and this network and there's other people. So I'm like, okay, like. A quick question. Yeah. If, I, if you don't mind me and not surprised. Of course. How much are you getting paid a week at this point? Oh man, me and Funky's trapping it out for like $20, $30 a night. Right. You know, and again, you know, it was one of those things where we entrepreneurs. I, no, no. But I really want to emphasize no, on that because that's important. Everyone wants to come in at the finish line. Man, nah. And it's and it's what's crazy, Kelby. I could not. I try to get a regular day job because mm -hmm. I wanted to like I only came down here with a certain amount. Right. You know, again, I, I've saved up money for my job, but that certain amount had to had to pay for my car. note, had to pay for my gas, you know, my food. Um, my hair, Douglas, Douglas don't, don't get it twisted, to, to okay? It. Oh right, <laughs> like you know, just just certain things, Man. and um, I could not get a a job to save my life, and it's like I would later learn, like, man, God did that because he like you need to get right into this shit. You need to just you need to you need to go through it. That ain't what I sent you down there for. That's not what he <laughs> sent me down here for, and I needed to go through it. And honestly, if I would have had a job, it would have took away from the creativity of everything. So. Right. It didn't never work. So no. I had to become creative. I, right. you know, like I said, just every year was something different for me. The first year was just learning the people, learning the, the, not the people in the front, the people behind the scenes. I'm learning all the important movers and shakers. I'm paying attention. Second year, I'm learning the demographics, funky and all the producers and had me at every studio in the city, every club in the city. So I'm learning the highways like, oh, okay, cool. This learning all the places I need to go to network and eat at. And, you know, third year, year three, I'm finally figuring out how to make some damn money. Right. So during that time, it's a blur. I can't remember how that shit was working. But, you know, like, e even if he didn't pay me, he'd make sure he'd get my food that night. You know right. what I'm saying? Or some nights I had to sleep in the car, you know what I mean? Because niggas ain't had no gas. But it was fun. That shit was all fun to me. Man. So I don't, I don't look at it like bad. I look at it like this is what I had to do. But that is... <sighs> It's the perspective. Right, see, like right, you had right. that perspective at Duncan. Yeah, facts, facts. And see, that's like true. you take that perspective with you anywhere. Like yep. you, it's like, and that's that's a talent. That's mm, God given. Everybody right. don't have that. And 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 as much as we try to instill mm. that in people, you can't. Either you got it or it. you don't. Yeah, that's true, man. And so, like, that's one of the things where it's like the the because I do like a lot of mentoring and Absolutely. consulting work and stuff Absolutely. like it was the the a lot of younger artists mm. but also aspiring professionals of course and it's like and it's hard to kind of explain that me i didn't have a job i've never mm. like really i like i worked at a, a grocery store for like mm. a year and a half when i was like 14 15 years old Got you. but i was always a little entrepreneur so right. like it was like so many things that I did when I was young. Like I started coding early and nice. like I used to do like go work in my my uncle's garage. Yep. And be slaving breaking down engines right. and sweeping up and yep. making it happen. Oily and greasy and all that stuff at the end of the day for like twenty dollars. Like <laughs> real hard work. So but it was like save up all my money and do all this stuff. So it's like that instilled a work. He gave me my first job. He just passed. Mm. So it was just like, like remembering like all these little things that people do for you along the way that Absolutely. show you possibility and show you these things Absolutely. And, it, and it instills it in you. Right. That's so true. And so we take that with us into any situation that we go in. So Thanks. you take it with you to New York. Mm -hmm. You had it when you came back to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You ha you further developed it when you got down here with Funky. Mm -hmm. Like because it's like just a matter of seeing like especially when you're that close to mm -hmm. the situations like if you could have it at Duncan. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you have it right. with with Future coming in and Young Jock over here and like, <laughs> like literally I think Young Jock was probably one of the first celebs that I was around and again I didn't. I wasn't even excited, and of course, of course, I'm excited. It's, yeah, I get you. But yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. this. To me, I think everybody else was more excited for me, but I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. So right. to me, it was all normal. 
it's like I'm not excited that you're in the room. Yeah. I'm excited that I'm in the room. Right. Right. Exactly. Like that's the that's whole like I remember the yeah. first time like at Patchwork like yeah. Tip over here just like oh, crazy. Man. I'm mm. goddamn Atlanta. <laughs> I'm here finally, Yo. like you know what I mean, doing this shit. Yeah, that's true. So, so all right, so you're you're working with Funky, mm-hmm. and it's well, 2016, 2017. Yeah. Like you, it's it's starting to come together. Is right. that is that the is that the year that you found it? Oh, um, the progress report. Okay, so like the company, right? Yeah. So so Funky. 2013, you know, since then. Right. You know what I mean? Um, but yes, officially the Progress Report uh, Media Group LLC did become an actual business right. 2016. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yo, let's speak on that. Okay. Let's speak on that because we all start here. All, all things, if I want to move my That's hand, right. it starts as a thought before right. this, before yep. the action. So every, mm. every company starts like that. Mm-hmm. The Progress Report started here in 2013. Around 2013? Technically, right. I, I would say yes, because that's when I was forced to be an entrepreneur. Right. So, yes. So, yeah. So when did the, when did the name come about? Like when you when you named it? Um, I would I'd probably say like 2015, because this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Before it was that I was always going by my name. Right. Um, from I think PR. that's when I like, 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 right. like the, I, them was the emails I got. You're right. <laughs> like, I saw the, I saw the rebrand and yeah. I see I see the retro rebranding coming too. OK. La, la, right. land, like. yep. <laughs> so it was always from the PR side of things to the interviews. It was always under my name. Right. And it was just like, man, it just didn't feel right because I'm like, I always, always think long term. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, like, I know I ain't gonna want to be the only one doing this shit. You know, I want to, I want it to be bigger than me. So I'm like, man, what if I want my sister or somebody else working for my brand? It can't just be my name. Right. So I was just brainstorming names. Tell that to Joe Budden. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Listen, listen. I mean, into each his own. It's like, y'all up out of here. Y'all up out of here. <laughs> And, you know, and I think, again, it was just one of those things. I just, I don't know. I just wanted it to be a thing that I could just, like, we can just pass down or just right. other people could be a part of. Because I just never wanted it to be me. Yeah, like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want it to be me, even though it was, for, it was me for so long. Right. So I was just brainstorming names one day in my first apartment. I'll never forget it. I, I wish, I hope, I probably still got that notebook somewhere. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I wrote down a lot of different names and just the progress report stood out because it was unisex and it was just fun. You know, I always equivalent shit, things to school, to school, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So I equivalent everything uh, you, We are already demonetized. At okay, this point. okay, <laughs> correct. So I equivalent a lot of things to school. So I'm like, man, progress report, you know, it's not a one and done. You got to come back. Like, right. so... And that's just how it happened. I was just brainstorming it, and I just made sure the name was available, and that's that's you know how we got it. All right. So working with Funky 2013, mm-hmm. you're learning the ropes, learning the city, learning the market, learning what your value is, what things you can do for people. Right. And being able to put a price point on it. Right. Figuring out the name, how you're gonna bundle this. Mm-hmm. And then in 2016. LLC, make it an official. Right. And then from there, what happens? I mean, and even during that time, too, I'm working with Dundee, the producer. I'm working with Sunny Digital, Zaytoven, a lot of people. Um, I just feel like my calling was always to be a liaison from the streets to the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I always work and known dudes that's, that was in the streets, dudes and females. And, you know... Because even with the producers, I'm learning that, you know, they charge this amount. The street dudes got this amount. So they trying to figure out a way and just to clean it and just to, you know, do something better and different. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, just working with the DJs, working with the producers, the publicists, we all necessary. The media is all, it's all like this. Right. So that's, you know, that's what it taught me. And I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm just always just trying to figure out what's missing. How can I be a value again and service? So I'm just putting it together. Um, and again, just creating the company was more so because I'm asking my friends, like, you know, friends that are smarter than me. I'm asking them, like, 
I don't have a job. What am I supposed to do in terms of reporting my income? Like, right. what am I? I just feel like something ain't right. What am I doing wrong? They like, I'm you got to get an much LLC, money right? And- like, something going on. Like, <laughs> so they telling me like, you got to get an LLC, right? And that's where that came from. So now I'm nervous, like, fuck, like I gotta hurry up and do it. So I'm I feel gonna, pressured. Yeah, I didn't, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, I gotta hurry up and do it, you know. And so imagine if I would have had more thought. I'm doing this on some like, I gotta hurry up, right? Because I didn't know no better. I didn't have no mentors at the time. I didn't yeah. have. I didn't really utilize the internet the way that I wish I would have known. I right. could have back then. I really didn't. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. It, it wasn't that wasn't the internet like so that's what i thought i would okay. i would tell you like when i started the magazine mm. in 2007 mm. i started it to democratize information like so my whole Got thing you. is i moved down here and i was making like 40 60 000 a year rapping mm-hmm. and i moved down here and i realized yo i suck like I saw it was like the talent pool is way more vast way better like I'm, I remember the first time I'm at a open mic and I see they doing the whole little y'all got a y'all choreograph right. it's this, this oh my god like, yo. nah for real yeah and, and then I got to know it's like yo and y'all, y'all not making y'all doing all this and y'all not making any money right and here I'm like I this is all I'm Spoil, doing right? yeah like <laughs> yo so like when I stopped doing music officially, mm. like I started the magazine because it was like realizing so much information that people weren't getting. So my whole right. goal was just to provide the information on from marketing to copywriting. So mm. it, it really just started. It was just a little newsletter, something I was doing yeah. to spread information. Right. Because I always find out about events late and like, oh, that right. was going on. This yeah. was. And so that was my goal. Mm. Um. And then we pivoted probably like a few years into it because like eventually the internet started catching up because everybody was cuffing internet and and, and you gotta realize in a certain generation mm-hmm. that we came from yeah weren't weren't on the internet like that so while oh, the yeah. information was there that's fine it was a little harder to find it that's we didn't true. have social media social media comes looking for you right like exactly. back then it was like you gotta google this oh, you gotta really you on the fourth page before you like yeah, ah this is facts. it right here that's, like, facts. that's facts so so it's like like at that point like when 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 we were younger when we started stuff like i've just started going on youtube looking mm-hmm. up stuff that like like man i because it wasn't, this resource wasn't there when I was learning this. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I, and this is totally on music related, but like, I was like, yo, how do you do the breaststroke properly? I have, like, I took swimming like in high school. It was mm-hmm. 20 years ago. And so like, I went forever, like I barely go swimming. We got a pool now. Like, right. so it's like, I'm like, all right. And I was like, just trying to remember. I'm like, let me go to YouTube. Like, <laughs> it's all this yeah. information now. So even like five years ago, mm. like it's so much new information that's just making it on there mm-hmm. that it, like while we had connection, you got to realize how much new information has been put online. Absolutely. And so sometimes it's even good. To, like I've gotten in the habit of like just rechecking stuff that I know. Like absolutely. Because <laughs> mm. bringing bringing it full circle with just information because when I first started my first business it was like reading these books and having things and not having an understanding of things so I'm like oh yeah this is a tax write-off and that's a tax and you can do this that and the Mm -hmm. other if you incorporate it but not having the context to understand what that really means. So true. But then also not having the mentor or the contact, the person to ask. You (laughs) just think you know, like, oh yeah, I got that. And they'll be like, oh, that wasn't it at all. (laughs) That's facts, that's facts. So like speaking to like, now you started your business and you you got things rolling. What's one of the things that you feel like you can stand out that like um, something that you thought you understood, but you didn't quite understand. Mm. And you eventually like, you eventually like, oh, I was thinking, I was going Mm. about that the whole wrong way or. Mm. It's a great question. I mean, honestly, you know, being an entrepreneur, I'm learning stuff every day. I, I, I'm the first to tell anybody I don't have all the answers. Right. You know, because right when I think I know something, I'm talking to somebody else and we just putting our information together. I'm like, damn, like, OK, that's more simpler than what I thought. Um, 
just even from using programs like Final Cut or even using my camera because everything was self-taught. Right. I really started doing the interviews because I wanted people to see these relationships long term. Right. Because I'm like, man, I can't just I can't just make out as, you know, money with Sunny Digital and niggas don't know I got a relationship with Sunny Digital. Right. Or I can't just have a relationship with Zaytoven and not do an interview. That's crazy. So that's where I wanted that's why I wanted to start. But just even simple stuff from learning how to export, learning how to properly export my hard drive. I, I messed up so many hard drives <laughs> and I'm not happy. Like, I'm not smiling. No, no, I'm I, pissed. Like, listen, I've lost them too. Like, we all, <laughs> we all, we all, I lost like, so much man, good footage. The, because the magazine I I almost know. shut down one time. Like, I I'm like, it. oh, we done. It's, <laughs> so just simple like that. I, I've, I've, I've destroyed so much footage by not even learning how to, not knowing how to properly export a hard drive. I'm just pulling it out, my computer. Right. I'm every time. Yeah. Oh, all no the eject time. button. All like, the it's time. plug and play. Unplug and leave. So when <laughs> when it stopped working, I'm like, yo, this is the this is the second one that did this. What am I doing wrong? And so it's it's little stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I can't even get into the big stuff just because again, I'm there's so many things that I just still learn every day. Right. But just little stuff like that is really what was just like, man. The internet is your friend. Some it can be, you right. know, anything that you just don't know, just look it up and just use it as a resource. If anything, it's a resource, not your friend. But you know what I mean. It's, no, it's I think no. You, you. I feel like you're 100 percent right. It's like just like anybody, you can make them a friend or an enemy. Right. It's how yeah. you choose to interact with. That's them. true. And so it's like, um, like with consistently developing. Right. Like your business with consistently developing your perspective, mm -hmm. your knowledge, your tools, your team. Yeah, that too. Like going from doing the interviews to, to the podcast. Mm. How? Um, it was crazy. I did an interview with Parlay in Apartments and he gave me a shout out. He was just like, lie, you was doing a podcast before people was doing a podcast. And I'm like, you know. It wasn't even that I was looking at it like doing a podcast, but I guess it was really um, Mook B from them franchise, or no, I'm sorry, for Deeper L. Yeah. He, he was just like, why you ain't got your own show? And I said, I really don't care to have my own show. Yeah. But, but he was just like, nah, like, come do your show. So it's really him in, in a sense where he was just like, you should do that as opposed to just doing interviews right. only. And the show was cool. Like, again, everything is always so fun and raw when you first get into it because it's just something just uh, authentic, genuine. It's new. It's fresh. Those days was fun because we weren't worried about no numbers. We weren't worried about no pressure. We yeah. just really having fun. And one of my very first guests was my favorite artist, OJ the Juice Man. Okay. You know, <laughs> right. So... I'm really just, really just enjoying this moment. Like, wow, what the hell? And then I had um, Hood Affairs on there because, you know, I made a lot of uh, important alliances such as yourself mm -hmm. just from, I'm, I'm a support and I'm a student of the game. I'm looking at what all y'all doing. Like, damn, like, you know, this is some dope shit. And um, how can I, again, be an asset? How can I make my shit strong so then I can be an asset for you and vice versa? And with Hood Affairs... I think we met through Bankroll Fresh. I'm not too sure. But of course, I've been knowing of Hood Affairs for years. So to meet them in person was just so dope. And they could tell probably like, man, she really excited. Like on some shit. Not on some groupy shit because it's never been that. It's just right. more so like I respect y'all. Like y'all been putting in work for years into being your presence. Man, I'm, I'm just super honored. So we just always built that rapport. And when they came and did an interview with me, um, they was just like, you know, you should get a DJ. And they was just like, we got this girl that we just met. And then I was just like, mm, okay. So it ended up being DJ XL. Right. So I'm like, all right. So I, I like, I like XL cause I just liked her vibe. I liked right. her energy. She was real focused and serious like me. Right. And, um, I was just like, you know, she's a pretty girl. I'm like, I, I like her. I like her long hair. I think she dope. I like her style. So she just was, you know, anytime we would do a show, we've been doing the show every week, Wednesdays, 9 to 11 for years. Right. So she would pull up, be consistent, 
you know, and um, really do what she needed to do. Just play the music. And I just respected that so much. Like, man, she really serious like me, you know, not on nothing else. And um, so that's how we built. And then uh, Boss Britt, she's from my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio. She She's a little younger than me. But I remember her from the city. She would always put parties together. Like she was real popular in the city. And I've always been chill. So I'm the type to pull up to the party. And, you know, people know me if they know me. You know, I'm what's good, you know, on some music industry shit. But I was never in the forefront. I, I didn't, introvert. didn't. Very introverted, but right. never cared to throw parties, but always handling business, you know. Right. So I respected how she just always had her own wave, like, and people knew her and gravitated towards her. So I, I liked that. And she was just like, you know, how can I be a part of this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I never thought about having no co-host, but I'm like, well, let's just try it out. Okay. So it was really just that simple. You know, I just I just liked the approach. They, they wanted to be a part of it. And again, that's why I had to change the name to the progress support. The goal was for it to always be more people right. to help as opposed to it just being La La Shepherd, where it was just me. I wanted it to be more people. So it was just one of those things. It was just perfect timing, really. Yeah. And and the, and that's the thing is like the chemistry. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It seems for like sure. friends. Like, we like are. You, and that, I think that's kind of too often, especially like, yo, post pandemic. Mm. Like everybody like, yo, just put some people in a room. And yeah, <laughs> like yeah, talk. yeah. And, and and it's it's a noticeable difference. I agree. When I agree. when people have genuine relationships, genuine mm. respect for each other, and and like actually care about each other, right? right? So it's That's like true. the conversation is more more genuine. I agree, hundred percent. And then people aren't afraid to say their opinions and, right. and disagree because right. I know this ain't no we ain't about to fall out over this. Yeah, Not yeah, no yeah, podcast fact, shit. Fact, like, fact, <laughs> fact, fact. That's true. And so like so it, it and I think that's led to like some very interesting shows, some very interesting interviews mm -hmm. as well like what what are some of the like the interviews or shows that like in your mind that um have been the most fun or stood out mm. when it comes to the progress report and, and just even going back to what you said our friendship absolutely has developed over the years we always have this conversation because again we started out even though me and Britt was from the same town or mm. hometown we wasn't necessarily friends right. i would just know her and she would know me yo all right that's the Atlanta effect. Right. Like, you know, when you out of town, right. just when you see someone that's from you, what's up? Like, yeah, it's, it's a whole different, like, it was just like that. I don't know none of these people, but I know you. Right. Like, like, we good. And we all became cool because it was like, I respected them first and foremost. Right. I respected that they was on their grind. They seen I was on my grind and they've gone on to do the biggest all girl parties in Atlanta. And I respect it. And it's just, you know, we just really developed a true chemistry just based off of us really working on developing our friendship so that's that i i don't think if i was thrown in a room with people that it i mean the chemistry might be there you know who knows but that's how ours developed so i had to say that but in terms of um interviews um it was a lot of memorable interviews and the one i'm gonna just have to say is the orlando brown one because it was just crazy like my man Enu set that up and when he had texted me about it, like, you know, I got Orlando Brown coming. I'm like, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking about Orlando Brown from Family Matters, from Jamie Foxx show, you know, uh, Major Pain. Mm -hmm. So honestly, before that, I, 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 in my mind, I'm not thinking about Orlando Brown now and all the antics and stuff that be going on with him. Right. So I'm thinking it's going to be a dope, normal interview. <laughs> from the time he got in there, that man was on 10. And I think with him, he likes the viral stuff. Right. Because I was asking him some real shit. I'm like, so you like this unnecessary attention? Right. He was just like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do when the camera's on. I said, sir, like, what the hell? <laughs> but that, that interview was crazy because it was just like, man, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe, like, it was just too much going on. And that's still one of our <laughs> highest functioning interviews. And it's not my proudest interview moment as a journalist, but right. I just will never forget that day. He was just extremely flirtatious. It was just a lot. So I think that's one that we all will be like collectively like, yeah, we'll never forget that interview ever. Yeah. And it's been so many. I can't think of other ones that we've done together. Um, 
but it's it's been a lot. Like I said, my thing is just anybody that comes in the room to do an interview with us, if they leave out and feel good and they smiling and they feel good about themselves, like that'd be the goal. I just always pay attention to that part. Like, do they feel like they got their story out? Do they feel right. like they got their point across? And nine times out of ten, that happens. Sometimes it don't. But usually it happens, and that makes me feel good. So every interview together is definitely dope. And we've learned along the way, like, all right, sometimes don't don't over talk the guests for one. We got to learn things amongst ourselves. Like, OK, when you ask a question, cool, but make sure the guest is cool. You know what I mean? So right. it's just it's just been a lot of growth and progress over the years. Um, so I'm just proud of us just to see, you know, the things that we've accomplished and just how we've gotten better as interviewers ourselves, because everything was raw. We didn't go to media training. So just just seeing that growth from like where we at now to our first interviews is just tremendous. So here's the thing. It's interesting that you bring that up, like like the development and the progress of the progress report mm -hmm. and looking at the media landscape like you the antics for that interview and how it's still right. very highly performing that's our best performing interview and right. it's so it's so annoying to me but that's that's what i want to talk to you about the the fact that it's it's annoying it's memorable mm -hmm. but it's kind of annoying because you know you have other interviews that were went deeper mm -hmm. and touched on more stuff mm -hmm. that you were like you know mm -hmm. more passionate about and it's like how do you handle that pull like like to not press the bs and to as like because mm -hmm. y'all very conservative as, as far as like if someone doesn't want to touch on something y'all don't right push on. y'all don't pressure yeah. yeah like and and like to to even though it's like not formally journalists mm -hmm. like i feel like something i feel i mm -hmm. have the issue with myself I'm not a journalist. Like I, I don't put myself. I don't put myself out there as a journalist because I know what it takes to be a journalist and all this stuff. Nah, for real. But I do carry myself with a certain journalistic integrity. Like Absolutely. as a human being, I'm not gonna put this out there. Do these certain things. How do you manage that mm. that conflict from within? Because you want the numbers and the performance and those things, and mm. you know what's easy, right? I think personally, I just always got to remember why I started and also to the name of the platform. You know, if it's, if it's called the progress report, we can't just talk about bullshit. Right. And I think, you know, I just have to always remind myself that even to today is so many things that we can post, different things that we can do, questions that I can ask. And I do ask a lot of questions that might seem not even messy, but like, say, for instance, with Dolph's artists, mm -hmm. I had to ask a lot of uncomfortable questions to them. Mm -hmm. And before I ask those questions, I always tell them before the interview, like, hey, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And like, you know, if it's something that you don't want to answer, just tell me, you know, and I respect that. But I have to do it because if I don't do it, I'm going to get comments like, why you ain't asked this or or. Or in my mind, if it's a question that I want to know and I didn't ask it, I'm going to be mad at myself. Like, girl, just ask the damn question, you know? Right. So I just have to always remind myself I have to be comfortable with that. Like, people that's going to be for you are going to be for you. If they're going to support your platform, they're going to support it. And that might not be those 300,000 numbers that I would like just because I feel like we have great content. I got to be comfortable that it might be 30 or 300. Right. And, you know, and as unfortunate as that is, because I feel like, you know, people, if they really like look through a lot of content, they would love it. I just have to be comfortable with that because if not, I drive myself crazy and I've been there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just really as simple as that. I just always got to remind myself, what am I doing it for? Right. Yeah. With doing that is like finding the comfort of knowing the audience that you're speaking to, mm -hmm. no matter what size that audience is. Yep. Um, how does that translate to the business or not say how does that translate? Because I could tell you how it translates mm -hmm. to the business. For sure. Because in in keeping with your mission and being authentic. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we are, 2022, announcing yeah. joining the Revolt Podcast Network. For sure. And so, like, I think that it says a lot to um, knowing who your audience is and mm. speaking to your audience and being authentic and maintaining those relationships. Absolutely. Um, because, like we said, like, we're just kind of the theme, I feel like, 
because you're in that like I said, you came up in that very interesting space. Right, that's true. Where where it was it was growing with you. Mm-hmm. Um but now we're we're at the point where I think it's a lot of people who are getting into this who think that this is the way things have always been. Right. And so they're looking for the because it's possible to have the one video that do a quarter million. I get and it. Like, and so I it's do. like, I, I gotta, I gotta recreate that magic. I get it. I swear I get it. And it's, you know, I've had people come up to me too, like, you think you're gonna get another viral interview? And it's just, it's crazy. But then again, I have to always tell myself, why did you get started? Right. And I can only have certain intelligent, intellectual conversations with certain people. Because right. if not, everything would get under my skin. Right. So it's like, you know, um, I don't know if I'm hitting on your point that you was trying to bring mm-hmm. up. I'm sorry, but I'm, you know, I just always got to just remind myself, you know, why I got started. So what's important to me again, I, I want to speak to the people that I want to speak to. And as long as they feel good about the interview and I feel good about it, that's what's important to me. And I know it's going to be, a, you know, audience out there for that. Um, and, you know, I get it. People want to go viral. I get it. But it's just like, I'm not tripping. Even when we we went, we had a viral interview with Carlay about the thug situation. I almost knew that was going to happen just because the situation with thug had just happened. Right. But I wasn't like proud about it just because it was kind of like a cheat code in a sense where it was like thug just got locked up. So of course it was more so I'm glad Carlay trusted us with her story. That's what I was proud of. So it's like, I really don't be tripping off the viral stuff. It's cool. And I think, again, from the outside looking in, people are more excited for me than I am sometimes. Mm -hmm. But again, how did Carla feel when she left the interview? You know, do we still have a relationship? You know, that type of stuff is more important to me. Um, So I really, I just be chilling. I just, you know, again, I just want to give everybody a pleasurable interview. Right. I want them to feel good about what they've done so far. I'm going to praise them because it's obviously a reason why I to get ready for an interview takes a long time. So yeah. I, I called myself a journalist because it takes me a while. Right. Because it does. But just like I listen, I had her waiting for like an hour while I was getting oh, this stuff. Man. <laughs> it's a, it's a, but I know how this goes. <laughs> she made know? a couple phone calls. She it's made all good. Look, listen. I know how this thing goes. <laughs> but you know, that's I don't know. Just I'm just different from just the average person that's right. doing it, and that's cool. Like, you know, and I get it. They stuff might go more viral than mine all the time, and they numbers probably do look better than mine, but that's that's fine. I'm cool with that. Right. And I have to remind myself that all the time because, of course, you're of artists. Course. Yeah. But see, and I think that 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 speaks to, like, because we're professionals. Right. People don't look at us as artists. That's true. And so, like, that's the like I, I classify everybody the same. Like my definition of an artist: if you create something that wasn't here when you was born, you're an artist. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you may paint with beats, you mm-hmm. may paint with words, mm-hmm. I paint with marketing mm-hmm. plans. Like, that's I love to get creative. Oh, we can do this and mm-hmm. we can do that. And mm-hmm. I'll be excited. So like, Thanks. it's like understanding that every, like people demonstrate their creativity in different ways. Right. And that's really the reason why I did quit doing a lot of consulting work because I don't want to be a part of failure. Like I want to really? put together a great campaign for someone who doesn't, execute like I you did what was that at like I, trust me i feel so you. so i think that that speaks um volumes to you as far as character and for sure like but also lends itself to like when we're talking about the brand because mm-hmm. the the product builds the brand absolutely like it, I don't. It doesn't matter how fancy the box is. If mm-hmm. I open it up and it's empty, or if I pull out the iPhone and it don't work, bro. Right. Like I've had a bad brand. I don't care about all the flashy and the, right. all the other stuff. So it's like you can have the viral moment. You can have all the stuff, but ultimately, if it's not something of substance, like don't, that three hundred thousand is there for whatever it is. And when you don't Facts. deliver that, it don't matter anymore. That's true. <laughs> it's, and everybody's everybody's goals and a, a uh, level of importance is different. Right. And I think you was, you was asking about the business. How does that affect the business? Right. And for me personally, um, just being an entrepreneur, I've learned over the years, you got to have um, multiple streams of 
of income and that can be from just specifically music or doing something other than music right so it's a lot of other things that we do just outside of you know the interviews and the youtube um monetization that you know yeah. so it's just, just man that's like trying to feed somebody off them streams yeah, right. like, yeah, like man i got this artist that i posted up he complained about mm -hmm. how much they pay on spotify and how mm -hmm. many times like imagine youtube <laughs> like <laughs> Listen, you're going to have to pay for the production of this. <laughs> I was going to, right. By the time you do get the back end monetization from yeah. YouTube, you done invested so much. But it's like, man, listen, I think as long as you lead it, first of all, if you're blessed enough to have a passion, mm -hmm. we got to start there. Because yeah. if you if you got a passion, you're going to make it happen. Right. And, and I'm going to just say that everybody's not blessed enough to have a passion. I learned that. Right. So I'm just grateful to be passionate about something. Cause I feel like if I'm always passionate, it's you know something gonna happen, something gonna shake all the time. It's facts. No, I think that's I think that's a good place to 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 conclude it. Cause like that's that that really what it boils down to. Yeah. Is um having that passion and mm -hmm. that's essentially what you've been progressing to. Mm-hmm. Is is getting to that to that that vision. So with that, with that being said, 10 years from now. Mm. Kelby, I ain't gonna lie. I don't like those type of questions because uh. it's hard. Yeah. But I mean, honestly, I'll say this. Hold um, on, wait, wait up. We're gonna zen for a second. Close your eyes. All right. Close your eyes. Closing them. They close. mm -hmm. We're in the time machine. We're quantum leaping. Okay. We're 10 years, the year is 2032. Wow, that sounds wild. Wild, ain't it? That sounds crazy. <laughs> but it'll be here before you know it, and I pray I'm around. My son is 25. Oh, he just called God. you to set an appointment for us to meet for lunch. <laughs> that sounds crazy, right? Right. My eyes still closed. <laughs> so tell us. Uh-huh. Where is the progress report? The progress report, um, we still in these streets, of course, because, you know, we're going to have a new generation that's in the streets. We're never going to not be in the streets. We're going to have our ear in the streets, but we're going to have a lot of digital products as well, too. So that's where I'm going to come into play at. And we're going to be digitally, but also any interview that I want by that time, for sure, manifested, already done, easy. You know, that's one call away type situation. But we still passionate, you know. The passion ain't never gonna die just because I, I love what I do. So, the pa the progress support. We in schools. We doing more than just this music shit. We doing a lot. But we we helping our community though in in different ways. We putting programs together for these kids too, so they can see it's possible. You ain't gotta be an artist. You can do other shit. Ooh. That's where we at. That's where we at. That's where we at. Progress for all. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. I I appreciate you coming through. Man, this is dope. I appreciate you. Yeah, like my table's always open. Okay, <laughs> now nah, this is cool. I, I appreciate you, just not even for today, but everything that you do to support me that really means a lot. Yeah, like yo, my support genuine. Like that's a, like I already know. Yeah, like that's, right. that's the that's what that's what, another reason I don't be out in these Atlanta streets that much. <laughs> I, trust me, I feel you. Listen, <laughs> especially nowadays. Yeah, I it's like I. So, um, yo, this has been another dope interview. Yes, sir. The homie Lala Shep yes. representing the Midwest, Cincinnati, Ohio, the Progress Report. Yes, sir. Make sure they tune in every Wednesday. I mean, really, at this point, just just tune in. Go to the website because we dropping we dropping every day. We film mostly Wednesdays, right. but we we release. Every other day, if not every day. Content on top of content. Yeah, so just check us out. YouTube, the Progress Support Podcast, TPRmediagroup.com, Revolt for Podcasts, and just anywhere. Just search the Progress Support, the Progress Support Podcast. We should come up. Check us out. I'm Lala Shep, L-A-L-A-A-S-H-E-P. All right. Yep. Like, subscribe, follow, Please. share, repost, retweet. All that. I need that um, all. Remix it. Yep, um, yep, yep. All that should make a short. <laughs> Right, like, all like do all that all shit that you do. Stuff, yeah, right? all that new shit. <laughs> <laughs> do it all. Thanks. Once again, appreciate you. Of course. And we out. We out. Kelby, that all was right. dope, man. That was cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Keep me posted so I can promote and post, man. You're